So the Center for Excellence in Spine Research at TSRH is really important for us. The purpose is to bring a number of different talented people with various disciplines to the table to try to answer the unanswerable questions we have in spine deformity today. That kind of sticks out right there, doesn't it? There's a lot of treatment strategies. I call it tools in your toolbox. And we pick the right tool for each individual patient and case. But the beautiful thing about Scottish Rite and the Center of Excellence for Spine Research is all of the tools are available. When we take care of patients, probably the single term that is most important is team. So it's the physicians, it's our nurses, we have our orthotists in the clinic with us. Each of the patients really gets the best from all of those various disciplines to take care of uh, their spine and their scoliosis. So early onset scoliosis is a very interesting category of diseases because it's really much more than one specific disease. Uh, and really we use that term for all children age less than three. The primary difference with early onset scoliosis is that if this is not treated effectively or neglected, this actually becomes a source of morbidity and mortality. The treatments may be things like casting or bracing or the use of halo gravity traction. So this is a very interesting technique where we can actually attach a ring to the patient's skull and then we can suspend them by their own body weight uh, with the use of traction and so we're actually stretching them or getting their spine as straight as we can before we ever get to the operating room. At our disposal for the treatment of each of these patients are a lot of different options. The Metacast for the very young baby who comes in with a relatively small curve, but because they're so young they're going to have to grow and as they grow that curve is going to become very large. So this uh, is the original x-ray on Farron when he was nine months of age, so he had a fairly large rotational curve that went along with this radiograph. So this metacasting is a great way to try to grow the spine straight so that they never need treatment in the future. It's fairly aggressive, but it's a casting method that works very well. As the patients get older, we then move to options of growing rods where the curve is too big and is not treated with a cast, but instead has a growing rod construct. So probably the first thing that heals is Back in the 1980s, we began doing research to develop better implants for correcting scoliosis. We developed a new implant system in which you were able to correct the curve much better and not have to use casts and things like that after the instrumentation. So the patients came out of their surgery and they were able to get back to school in a couple of weeks and, and really get nice correction of the curvature that they had. That was called the TSRH instrumentation system. That then evolved into another system, which was called the silo, and that was used for a fair number of years too, and then systems kind of advanced beyond that. On the horizon, or has come along, is the uh, magic rod. And I think the advantage that the magic rod gives us isn't surgical advantage, it's the fact that we can avoid repeat surgeries after we've placed it. And the magic rod is a rod that is much like a growing rod, only it elongates with non-operative treatment after the rod is placed. That to me is, you know, fantastic. And it's, it's a lot more holistic approach towards, you know, my job and what we do. So we have at our disposal a number of different surgical options. They're all available. Each treatment is really specific to the patient and to the spine deformity that they have. It's almost like it's a buffet of choices for treatment. Sometimes it's just what we call radiographic observation, where we just check them with another x-ray, you know, six months to 12 months down the road. Sometimes we initiate bracing. Bracing is utilized for those patients who are in their adolescent period typically, who are growing fast, but are under the certain curve magnitude that doesn't require surgical treatment. And the goal of bracing is to prevent that curve from getting larger to avoid surgical treatment. For many years, physicians treating scoliosis argued about whether or not the braces were really working. And the studies always showed a modest effect, but it was kind of muddy data. So we developed these sensors that would record the temperature in the brace. So by looking at the temperature, we could tell whether or not the patient's body was in the brace or not in the brace. 
We were then able to clearly show that the more hours they wore the brace, the more likely they were to have successful treatment with the brace, and the less likely they were to need a surgery. One of the exciting things that we have uh, here on the research front is Carol Wise in her molecular genetics lab. So she was the first to identify a gene for adolescent idiopathic scoliosis. The end result we're hoping for is to, to cure this disorder, uh, certainly to treat it non-invasively so that we're not taking children to surgery to, cor to correct you know, a deformity of their spine. Ultimately, what we really want to do is prevent scoliosis from getting bigger, prevent big operations. Once they get to surgical treatment, we certainly want to make the surgery safe. And so we have uh, studies that are looking at how to make the spine safer with respect to avoiding neurologic complications. But the most important thing that we do is we ask, what are the important clinical questions we have for our patients? What are the answers that we don't have today that we can research today so we have a better answer for tomorrow?